I personally prefer to do a femoral nerve block rather than a true fascia iliaca block for hip analgesia because A, the femoral nerve is the main therapeutic target of interest, so why not deposit local anesthetic directly around it? And B, I personally find it much easier to enter the plane under fascia iliaca next to the femoral nerve as there is much more of a potential space. More laterally, it can be tricky to avoid injecting either too superficially above the fascia iliaca or too deep within the iliopsoas muscle. The critical element of the fascia iliaca block that I retain, however, is to use an out-of-plane approach so that I am injecting in a cranial direction and thus promoting spread to the proximal articular branches of the femoral nerve that supply the hip joint, and hopefully also to the lateral femoral cutaneous and obturator nerves. Similarly, I will also use a larger volume of 30 to 40 milliliters as long as the maximum recommended dose of local anesthetic is not exceeded. Another important modification that I have adopted is to use a hybrid out-of-plane, in-plane visualization approach. This was inspired by Dr. Peter Hebert's description of his supraingual fascia iliaca block, in which he places the probe longitudinally, obtains an in-plane view of his needle, and advances it cranially into the pelvis under direct vision. I will now describe how I perform this technique. Start by imaging and identifying the femoral nerve in transverse cross-section close to the inguinal ligament. This is described in detail in my video on the femoral nerve block, so I will not elaborate further here. Enter the femoral nerve compartment under fascia iliaca, just next to the lateral corner of the nerve, using an out-of-plane approach at a 45-degree angle. Correct needle tip position is confirmed by the expected expansile spread pattern next to the nerve. I inject approximately 10 milliliters to open up the fascial compartment adequately. At this point, the probe is rotated 90 degrees to obtain a longitudinal view of the needle and its tip within the subfascial lake of local anesthetic. The iliopsoas muscle is visible deep to the hypoechoic fluid. The needle tip can now be advanced further cephalad into a supraingual location proximal to the inguinal ligament. I usually continue to inject local anesthetic as I advance the needle to open up the space and to observe that the local anesthetic is indeed spreading in a cranial direction over the muscle and into the pelvis. A catheter may also be easily placed using this technique. Once the initial loading bolus of local anesthetic has been delivered through the needle, a catheter may be advanced without difficulty 5 to 6 centimeters beyond the needle tip. Alternatively, you can use a catheter over needle set. I have begun to favor this set as it is almost as simple to perform as a single injection block and in my experience can be easily done at the bedside in the emergency department or in the ward. With the out-of-plane approach just described, the entire length of catheter can be inserted into the fascia iliaca compartment alongside the nerve, minimizing the risk of malposition and dislodgement.